Here we go again with the second part of what's new in Autodesk Inventor 2019, a deep dive into new functionality. This is Andreas Ernst Wagner and I'm working as a designated support specialist in the Enterprise Priority Support at Autodesk. This chapter is concerned with enhancements and improvements on port modeling side, including sketching. In the 3D sketch environment, the general dimension command was enhanced to preserve the length of an interpolation spline. If you find this enhancement useful for you, please take a look at the node to understand the behavior once the length is removed again. Let's directly jump into a quick demo. I've prepared some geometry consisting of a spline in a 3D sketch and two lines in a 2D sketch. At first the old behavior, when I change the dimension of one of the two lines. Dimension change from 30mm to 20mm and updating the port leads to an extended spline. There was no mechanism in place to prevent the length of the spline from changing. The new behavior in the 3D sketch environment, the general dimension command is enhanced to assign a length to an interpolation spline. In this demo case, I assign a length to the spline and change the length dimension of the left line again. While trying to update the port, a message appears, tells me constraints were set, which prevents the wish geometry change. In other words, the newly added spline length just keeps the length. To complete the workflow, I enter the spline sketch and delete the dimension again. As stated in the note, the shape of the spline reverts back to its original shape. It is easier now to create a helical geometry as the helical curve command in the 3D sketch supports helixes with variable pitches now. Enable the new variable helical curve option in the helical curve dialog box and you get access to the definition area. There you can specify multiple pitch, revolutions, diameter and height values for helical geometry. Once you've created variable helical curves, those can be used in the loft command as guided rails or in the sweep command as path. The following video is quite comprehensive and shows a detailed workflow of how to create helical geometry such as extruders, feed screws, etc. with the new variable helical curve settings. Enjoy watching, otherwise you need to skip the next 7 minutes. I've prepared a simple shaft, should be used as separate port to weld on the variable extruder port. I am already in a new 3D sketch and currently in the helical curve dialog box. So, the new option variable helical curve is enabled and I start to create my first helix. For a better start and endpoint selection, I made the center point visible and created an additional work point beforehand. I am going to divide this helix into four sections, driven by height values as well as with different pitch and diameter values. Once the helix is created, it still hasn't a relation to the shaft. If you are new in the 3D sketcher environment and you intend to constrain geometry, you just need to know a. The project geometry command is called include geometry to get other geometry available and b. You can use work feature geometry like work planes, work axes and so on as well without including it. In other words, just directly click on it during constraining. In the next step I create a second helical curve intended to use as path geometry for a future sweep feature. The creation is quite identical to the first helix. Only the diameter value is constant with 99mm as it is the inner geometry of the extruder model. The diameter of 99mm has been chosen to make sure the model volume of the future extruder intersects with the shaft model. Of course, for a real development, a diameter of 100mm and higher is better. Even this helix geometry has to be constrained. The constraining works also with coincident and collinear. Before we can apply the sweep command, we still need a profile can be sweeped. My intention is to create a sweep surface and to thicken the surface later on. As you probably know, the creation of surfaces is possible with open sketch profiles like lines, arcs, etc. So I only need a line can be sweeped. 
As basis for the line sketch, I use a work plane runs through the helix start point and is normal to the helix curve. If necessary, flip the normal of the created work plane to swap the coordinate system of the plane. So, new 2D sketch on the work plane, projecting the start points of the outer and inner helix, and sketch the line between the projected points. Then we can finally use the sweep command. Select the line as profile and switch to path and guide rail to be able to select the both helix curves. The inner helix is used as path, the outer one as guide rail. Still a quick preview check and OK. The sweep surface has been created and we get to the last step to add volume to the extruder geometry. As mentioned before, I use the second command. Selecting the sweep surface, use an appropriate thickness and thicken symmetrically. Still quickly disable the visibility of the sweep surface and work plane. And that's it! You have two additional options for image properties now. With the set chroma key you can specify a transparency color. In the two example pictures the background color is white. I changed the set chroma key to white and the background is filtered out. Compared to Inventor 2018, you can see a much better result in 2019. The Use Image Alpha option supports alpha layers to combine the background with the image. Alright, a quick and easy enhancement. When you've created a thicken feature, the information about the depth and the method is now displayed in the browser. To get the information displayed, you need to enable the display extended information after feature node name in browser checkbox in the application options on the part tab. A new inverted fillet option is available in the type drop-down menu in the fillet dialog box. You can create fillets with convex or concave edges. Following a really quick demo video. Simply use the fillet command and select the edges where you'd like to apply fillets. In this sample, I select edges or outside and inside to show the corresponding convex and concave fillets. Previously, the Tolerance Advisor reported only the status of the tolerance scheme. You can now enable phase status coloring to display the constraint state on the model. Click phase status coloring at the bottom of the Tolerance Advisor browser to turn on and off the phase coloring. As usual, a demo video. To have a good example, I'm applying a surface tolerance feature on the lower model face. So, still switch to the alternative plane to correctly align the annotation and entering the tolerance value of 0.1 mm. The next step is place another surface tolerance feature on the opposite side with the parallelism as geometric tolerance. By the way, the yellow highlighted tolerance symbols in the drop-down menu points you to the next available geometric tolerances result in a fully constrained tolerancing. There are enough tolerances available for a first check of the phase status coloring. Once you've enabled the status coloring, you see a status legend where you can determine the current status of your tolerances. In my case, the yellow model phase is partly constrained the green phase is fully constrained. The constraint status is depending on the use case. My model tolerance status is sufficient to me. You can also keep turned on the phase status coloring if you see this as beneficial while you are applying geometric tolerances. I apply another tolerance feature to the both slot phases. In this use case, the perpendicular tolerances leads to a fully constrained tolerance status. Another useful improvement is the updated whole thread command is now able to display the pattern quantity. In Inventor 2018, the quantity of a whole pattern was only displayed when you used a tolerance feature to annotate the whole. In case you come from Inventor 2018 or previous, you need to make sure the active style library contains the 2019 3D annotation styles. Otherwise, the quantity isn't displayed. As a CAD administrator, you can use the Inventor Style Library Manager to migrate and or add styles. I've prepared a circular pattern of a through hole for this demo. 
click on the whole set node command and select a whole of the pattern. The quantity gets displayed with the annotation text. If you'd like to dig into model-based definition, I recommend a great Autodesk University class from Peter Destryker about model-based definition at Industry 4.0. I've also watched this class and was thrilled about the content. Another good resource to get knowledge about model-based definition is the Autodesk Knowledge Network. Once you're on the AKN page, you can select your product of choice in the search field. Then search for model-based definition and you will get a lot of suggestions you can follow. On the left side, next to your search results, you can also filter for specific sources like the Inventor Help or Autodesk University. I think you'll find enough information about MBD for sure. Another good source to get into model-based definitions is to search in the Inventor Tutorial Gallery. There is a Create and Analyze Terrans Features tutorial available, you should definitely have a look on. I've highlighted the search criteria in the picture, so you can find the tutorial much easier. The Automatic Blending option has been added to the Direct Edit command and is during Move Geometry and Rotate Geometry available. The Direct Edit command is mainly used to edit imported models from third-party CAD systems or neutral file formats that have no history, like STEP. Previously, you could only rotate or move a face feature to another location with direct edit. The same, and previous behavior, you achieve when the new option automatic blending is checked. When unselected, the total length of a face feature is modified. I think a short demo video clarifies the functionality of the new automatic blending checkbox. In this use case, I take the direct edit command to change model geometry of an imported model. So I take the step file and import it as converted geometry. The imported model shows only a solid body in the model tree and can't be edited as the model history isn't available. I call the direct edit command and focus on the unchecked automatic blending option at first. Selecting the tangent face of the slot and pulling the length arrow to change the length. With the unchecked automatic blending option, I can now change the length. Once the automatic blending is active, the identical workflow provides the possibility to change the position of the slot, as well what meets the behavior in Inventor 2018 and before.